Hello, I'm Rainer Grüninger, Application Engineer at Kübler, and today I will show you how to integrate an Ethernet IP encoder in Studio 5000. Our setup consists of a Control Logix Allen Bradley PLC and an F5868 Ethernet IP encoder. The very first step is to install the respective EDS file of the encoder. For this reason, we go to Tools slash EDS Hardware Installation Tool and on the next steps, browse for the previously downloaded EDS file. Follow the steps until the EDS file is installed. With that, we can integrate the encoder in our network in the following steps. It is essential to set the correct network settings. So first, we have to define a valid IP address for the supervisor slash PC. The default subnet of the encoder is 192.168.1.xxx. In order to establish a connection to the device, the supervisor PC has to be in the same subnet. Go to the PC network settings and use the IP address 192.168.1.111. Next, we can set the IP address of the encoder. There are two basic ways of defining the encoder IP address, using DHCP or using a fixed IP address. The encoder is set to DHCP as the factory default method of obtaining an IP address. For this method, you have to use a separate software, which can handle DHCP or BootP, like Factory TalkView Studio or BootP DHCP tool. Using this software, the network is scanned and all devices are listed with their unique MAC addresses. The respected encoder MAC address can then be selected to overwrite the device with the desired IP address. Once the IP address of the encoder has been set, you can change it by reconfiguring the rotary switches or by means of a software tool like Molex tool. With this software, you can request all encoder parameters using the actual IP address. If you want to change the IP address, make sure to set the startup configuration on stored value. With this command, the encoder takes the latest stored value and a new IP address can be set. Simply type in your desired IP address and write the new configuration to the encoder. With the rotary switches on the back of the encoder, a fixed IP address can be set. The rotary switches represent the last three digits of the IP address. Make sure the encoder is not powered, then set your desired IP address. For this example, we set the last digits of the IP to 030. After that, the encoder can be powered again and will connect with the set IP address. Next, the encoder has to be added to the network and the connection has to be configured. The F58 Ethernet IP can have up to five PLC connections. In simple terms, a connection defines what kind of data is transferred between the encoder and the PLC. The encoder has one instance containing multiple instance assemblies. Instance assemblies, in turn, consist of multiple attributes. Depending on the type of application you have, it may make sense to use other connection types than the default connection. In Logix Designer, go to IO-Configuration and right-click on Ethernet. Choose New Module and search for the encoder name in the next window.
input the desired name of the new encoder. Here, F5868 underscore A3 and its IP address. In our example, this is 192.168.1.30. In the module window, click on Change. Select your desired connection. For this example, use the default connection Status plus Position plus Velocity plus Acceleration plus Preset and Direction Counting plus Config. Select Data Length, Double Int. With the data type, Double Int. All encoder inputs are displayed correctly as all input instances are 4-byte. Once everything is set up, you can download the configuration to check on the input values from the encoder. Click on Controller Status and choose Download. As soon as you go online, the encoder LED will turn green. The data exchange is indicated by the yellow flashing port LED. Navigate to the controller tags area. Here, you will find all assemblies of your connection listed beneath each other. Notice that the assemblies represent the three main categories of the encoder data configuration, input data, and output data. If you click on the assemblies, you can see that the input and output assemblies are arranged in the data format that has been chosen under module definition. Ideally, the data format corresponds with the length of each single attribute. In this case, double int is ideal. For demonstration purpose, we added a description to every attribute. If the shaft is rotated clockwise, we can see a change in the values position, velocity, and acceleration. This guarantees that the encoder was set up correctly and is working. Now that the encoder is working, we can configure its parameters. We will see how to adapt the scaling, the counting direction, and how to do a preset. For standard configuration, you would use the configuration parameters of the configuration assembly. These parameters are only sent acyclically at the start of the connection. So first, you have to make sure that the connection state is offline. To change the scaling, make sure to set the parameter scaling function to 1. Next, click on measuring units per revolution to set the MUR value. For this example, we set it to 16-bit, which is 65.536 in decimal. Click on Total Measuring Range to set the TMR to your desired value. In this example, we set it to 28-bit, which is 268.435.456 in decimal. Once the values are set and the encoder is set to run mode, the new scaling will be active. Once again, we download the program to check the values with the new configuration. If the shaft is rotated around the total measuring range, we can see that the encoder scales the position based on the new scaling values. The counting direction can be configured in the exact same way. Go offline and navigate to the parameter Direction Counting. Note the actual value. Value 0 indicates the direction clockwise. Value 1 is to be set for a counterclockwise direction. In this example, we set the counting direction to counterclockwise, which means it is set to 1. For a preset, it is important to understand that only the preset value can be set in the configuration assembly. The trigger has to be set in the output data of the encoder. To configure the preset value, go to Parameter Preset and assign your preferred value. In this example, we set the value to 1000. Triggering the preset is done through the output data.
To watch the effect of the new configuration, go offline and go online again. By turning the shaft counterclockwise, the position values increase. To execute the preset, navigate to the Instance Assembly 781 and in the first byte set the first bit to 1. The preset of Instance Assembly 779 is directly executed. But there is yet another way to configure certain parameters of the encoder and it is even more comfortable. By using the output assembly, the configuration can be sent during the runtime. This is possible for preset and counting direction. First, make sure the preset trigger command bits in byte 0 of output assembly number 781 is set to 0. Then, set the preset value in the fourth byte of the instance assembly 781. In this example, we use the value 1000. Set the preset trigger command bits to 2. Right after entering the values, we can see that the position of the encoder jumps to the predefined preset value. To reverse the counting direction, set the direction counting trigger bits in byte 2 of output assembly number 781 to 0. Then let the PLC establish the connection to the encoder. Now, set the direction counting trigger bits to 2. By turning the shaft of the encoder counterclockwise, the position value will now rise. A reset can easily be performed by setting the rotary switches on the back of the encoder to 555. To perform the reset, you can do the following procedure. Disconnect the encoder from the power supply. Set the rotary switches to 555. Connect the encoder to the power supply. Wait for approximately 5 seconds. Disconnect the encoder from the power supply again. Set the rotary switches to the position desired for operation, for example, 000. Connect the encoder to the power supply. The encoder is now reset. That's all you need to know to commission our F58 Ethernet IP encoder. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again in the next tutorial. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Your Rainer Gröninger.